Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again, and this is part 7 of my dynamo build. Be sure and watch the other videos if you haven't already. And I think this will be the concluding video of this series. And I have a bunch of uh, smaller things to do to get this thing uh, up and running and finished. And I bought uh, some small brass nuts to go right here instead of the steel ones. I don't like the steel ones. I don't like the looks of them. I found that by experimenting, and I put a flywheel on here to experiment uh, so that I can run it without uh, the compressor on, and I just uh, run it with the Dremel with a friction drive against here, so that aids me in doing that. But by experimenting and with the voltmeter, I have determined I get just a little bit better voltage, higher voltage, with uh, the bigger magnets, so I intend to uh, take it apart and uh, ream these holes half inch, they're 5 sixteenths now, or maybe it was 3 eighths, and put the larger magnets in and uh, see, see how that works, and then just a, f a few other plumbing jobs here, or wiring jobs that I want to do to improve the appearance, and then uh, decide whether or not I want to paint it. As you well know, I do not like to paint, but it probably would spruce it up a little bit. The machine is stripped down again, and these are the magnets that were in there, 5 sixteenths in diameter. This will be the new magnet, and that's half inch in diameter. So over to the milling machine I go to bore those holes out. Here's how I'm going to go about drilling and reaming that hole. Actually, I won't ream it. I just squared up the work in the vise with a little square. And then this is a 5 sixteenths drill bit in a 5 sixteenths collet. The bit is upside down of course and I just lined it up by moving the table around and now I'm ready to uh, put a half inch end mill in there. This is a half inch end mill and I've set the depth stop so it won't go all the way through. That way the magnet doesn't want to go through and catch on to the armature. So I'm just drilling with an end mill here is what I'm doing. As the size will be close enough. the magnet and that'll easily press in there. Now I have to flip the work around and do the other side and I won't show that. New magnets installed half inch. Correct polarity observed. And I'm ready to put it back together. Now that's much better. The new magnets made a world of difference. Now watch the voltmeter. See that I'm up at about three and a half volts now. Now I still need a little work on the light post here. I got a bad fit there and I, I bumped it loose so I'm going to have to remake that little base down there and unwire it to do that but uh, insignificant problem I guess because the thing is successful at this point. Also, I'm going to use a little Loctite to hold the magnets in there. They seem to be in there reasonably well. And the only thing I don't like about the more powerful magnets is that you can really feel the magnetism and you, there's quite a bit of resistance when the armature is in a line with the magnets. But I just have to live with that. After all, it is just a model. This is a piece of birch plywood, quarter inch thick. I'd like to have it a little bit thicker, but that's what I have in stock. So I'm going to go ahead and position this where I want it. Pleasing to the eye, I hope. Fasten it down, and then I'll tr decide where to cut it off and, and to trim it. And then we'll see if it's ready to run. I'm still making some fine adjustments, and I've been working for over 90 minutes on this thing. 
And one thing I found out is that these magnets, the bigger magnets that I put in there, were too strong, and I had to space them back just a little bit with a uh, Delrin spacer, and that's why they're hanging out here. And remember that the actual magnets that I wanted to use are still in China. I'm going to cut this out where you'll see the pencil mark. But I'm reasonably satisfied with this. Runs nice and the air pressure is about 20 pounds. Of course it's taking a three-quarter horsepower motor running the compressor to, to light these three tiny little LEDs. There's less flickering when I speed it up. But always some flickering. I believe I'll cut the wood out, so I have a final shape here, but that's just a piece of plywood, nothing fancy, no walnut, routed edges, or anything like that. Well, there it is in its semi-finished form. Being run by one of my little vertical engines. And I told you this could be run by uh, several of my engines, but some of the engines did not... Uh, lend themselves well to, to drive uh, the way the, the flywheel was set. And I did need a ratio here of a larger pulley on the engine and a smaller one on the uh, dynamo. This large pulley is two and a half inches. The small one, which came off an erector set, is one inch. So we have a two and a half to one ratio. Now, for your school kids out there, did this uh, increase the speed of the dynamo or decrease it by the large to small ratio here, if I'm stating that well? Now I finally decided that I am going to paint the thing and I've got some uh, green paint that looks like this. That'll be the base and then the uh, dynamo itself will be red. Now that'll take a day because the paint has to dry. I'm not going to paint the engine. And I should mount the, uh, en the entire thing on a piece of aluminum or some other material but I'm getting to the point here where the job is just about done. Another question for you viewers out there. Would you like me to add music to my videos? Or do you like them to be silent? Alright, here's the evolution of my engine. I was inspired by Tom Jensen's little dynamo from 1948. And... <laughs> There was my, uh, oh, I made several of these before I got the basic shape and uh, that I wanted. And then, uh, again, prototype one, which I ran for you and showed in a, one of the earlier parts of this video, made of wood. And then there was prototype two, just to make sure that the whole concept uh, would work. And then, finally, with... The dynamo itself. So that's how I build things without uh, blueprints. Now to the paint shop. My little dynamo just came back from the paint shop, but while I'm waiting for the paint to dry, let's talk a little bit about basic electricity and how this thing actually works. And again, most of these generators can be uh, uh, broken down into about six basic parts. 
the stator, the stationary part, and that may have field coils, windings in it, or it might have permanent magnets. And, and in this case, of course, it's got permanent magnets. Then we've got, uh, of course, some bearings, and we have a rotor, and the rotor consists of two coils wrapped around an iron core connected to a commutator. In this case, just since there's two coils, there's two sections, and the commutator, again, is nothing more than a rotary switch with brushes, in this case brass, but often they're carbon, to uh, uh, pick up the electricity come that has been excited and produced or just the opposite in a motor. It delivers the electricity into the coil. Most armatures that are, well this is out of a, a starter or a generator rather uh, from an old car. They don't use that kind anymore but uh, you're going to see these inside of all of your little electric drills and, and other uh, universal motors that you have around the house or in the shop. And that can, again consists of uh, uh, various sections here in the armature with coils that are wrapped around there and each uh, one of the coils is connected to a different section on the commutator. So this is what a commutator looks like on a bigger generator and there would be carbon brushes like I showed you earlier that uh, rub against that and then a bearing on each end but there would be also field coils if you've ever had a generator or a starter apart and quite heavy duty on a starter. This is the generator out of an old uh, telephone and it probably came out of a, a field uh, like in the army with a fold up crank. It wouldn't have a fold up crank if it came out of a house phone and every one of these I ever run across has a bent gear including the next one I'm going to show you but these are um, built around horseshoe magnets as were early magnetos and you can see there that we have again opposite poles there's a gear train here and the armature is down at the, at the bottom however the uh, the whole system of uh, brushes and so on and picking up the current is quite different on these old ones here so I'm, I'm not going to talk about that but uh, the principles are exactly the same it hasn't changed in a hundred and twenty years I used to take this little generator down to school and the entire class would form a daisy chain including myself and uh, I would crank it and everybody in the class that had the nerve to hang on would uh, would get a shock So this was one of my favorites. This is also a Welch scientific product. Got a little switch. On and off switch. And uh, children in science classes were able to conduct experiments with uh, little generators like this. Note that this is a pulsating DC, just like little dynamo that I built, so they're getting that flickering. And I can really feel the difference in the load when I crank this when I screw the bulb in. It's, it's a considerable amount of work compared to freewheeling. You know, of course, that motors and generators, dynamos and so on, uh, are nothing more than magnetic machines. And I've got a battery hooked up to the little uh, armature right now. I notice that one side is a north pole and the other is the south pole. Now when I disconnect the electricity, you've got nothing. Now, in a two-pole type of generator, you get quite a pulsation or flickering as you you could see a little bit uh, before and to avoid that or minimize that we just have uh, generators that have many many more sections uh, to the armature and many more sections to the commutator or many more coils I should say and many more sections and that uh, 
it takes away that, that full wave that you're getting and just smooths it out a bit. But we'll never get it smooth with a, a two pole. But that's the simplest one to make, of course. A DC generator or dynamo, simply put, is an electrical machine which converts mechanical rotary energy into DC electricity. And when a conductor is moved within the magnetic field, an electromotive force, that is EMF or voltage, is uh, induced in the conductor. In a DC generator, field coils or permanent magnets produce a magnetic field, and when the armature conductors are rotated into the field, an electromagnetically induced EMF is generated. So I hope that is clear as mud. Again, it's all about magnetism. We've got a north and a south pole in the permanent magnets or electromagnets, whatever it would be in the stator, and similarly in the armature. And so it's a matter of uh, attraction and repulsion as that current is induced. And this is rotated mechanically by, in this case, uh, compressed air, but it could be steam or, or some other uh, force that's actually turning this water water power or uh, wind power, but of course those aren't going to be DC dynamos, they'll be alternators. Now if you want to know much much more about this and have it explained better than what this old shop teacher can, look uh, on the internet uh, at Wikipedia, look up generators and dynamos and things like that, and there's some uh, good videos and there's some good information to read as well as what you will find in your library or your electricity books. Now let's put this thing back together. Alright, it's reassembly time and just about time to finish up this project. Well, there it is ladies and gentlemen in Technicolor. Now I'll hook it up to about 20 pounds of uh, air pressure and run it one last time and that will complete the job. Well, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. This is part seven of the seven-part uh, series on building a little DC dynamo. Hope you enjoyed it. Furs like a kitten. Leave a comment if you like it. Remember, there are no plans available for this. And this is Tubal Kane saying, thanks for watching, and so long for now, I'll see you in the next video.